and why ldl ldl and ldl because the genomic and genetic studies have supported that pathology we will see, see briefly about that epidemiology of course have uh, categorically told that ldl and atherosclerosis are very intricately bound and lowering of ldl by different methodologies statins or other drugs that has proved that that brings down not only ldl but that brings down the major adverse cardiovascular event uh, relative risk as well so ldl and atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease they are very intricately uh, related with each other ldl is the cause of ascvd it's not a risk factor ldl is a cause of ascvd relative risk reduction is proportional to the absolute reduction in ldl uh, cholesterol levels reduction of 1 millimole of ldl around 39 mg per deciliter is equivalent to nearly 23% reduction in ascvd events this is a span of 10 years of observation if you uh, span it to something like 25 years then this 23 becomes practically 35% relative risk reduction so ldl reduction should be done it should be done promptly benefit is independent of the type of drug used so statin pcsk9 benzodiazepine acid whatever you use benefit is related to the absolute ldl reduction intensity of ldl lowering should be based on the risk we have already repeatedly told you about risk estimation and then proceeding to the ldl target now a brief look into the uh, patho pathology or pathophysiology look at that this is the hepatocyte okay and the liver combines a single apolipoprotein b apob molecule triglycerides and cholesterol into an apob lipoprotein and secretes it into plasma as vldl we have already looked at that vldl some time back so apob cholesterol triglycerides and this is secreted into uh, the circulation as vldl once in the circulation triglycerides are removed from vldl by lipoprotein lipase and the apob lipoprotein is now called vldl remnant particle okay this is just simple biochemistry now the in the endothelial cell energy use and storage is done now when most triglycerides are removed the now dense apob lipoprotein is called as ldl okay so from hepatocyte vldl vldl the triglycerides are gradually chopped off and gradually the molecule becomes small low density lipoprotein vldl to ldl conversion occurs in 6 hours only 6 hours and ldl is in the circulation for 48 hours total so an apob lipoprotein spends 90% of its life cycle as an ldl that is something which is important now even more important come into the artery this is the lumen of the artery this is the arterial wall over the time atherosclerotic plaque grows as more apob containing vldl remnant and ldl particles become trapped in the arterial wall now keep in mind that the smaller the size of the it is more likely to pierce the space between two endothelial cells and enter the arterial or the uh, vessel wall the goal of lipid lowering therapy is to reduce the number of circulating apob lipoproteins which can become trapped in the arterial wall ldl is removed from the circulation by ldl receptors as you can see here which are located on the hepatocytes any apob lipoprotein less than 70 nanometer in diameter can cross the endothelial barrier which i have just now alluded to most apob lipoproteins are returned to the circulation via lymphatic system so this is something which we have to keep in mind some apob lipoproteins can become trapped in the arterial wall which can then attract the macrophages which become the foam cells and which is the uh, well taught uh, fatty streak which appears on the arterial wall or arterial endothelial surface so as more ldl and other apob lipoproteins become trapped the size of the atherosclerotic plaque starts becoming enlarged trapping of ldl particles leads to progressive development of atherosclerotic plaque gradually the plaque increases in size especially if it grows rapidly then the fibrotic plaque actually the fibrotic cap is poor lipid content is higher so that becomes an unstable plaque it can get ruptured resulting into a heart attack or stroke or a clinical event and that's why our duty is to reduce the number of ldl particles the number of ldl particles trapped within the arterial wall is directly proportional to circulating concentration of ldl lowering the ldl concentration and keeping it low over a period of time 
reduces the number of lipoproteins that become trapped in the arterial wall, so atherosclerosis or managed diabetic dyslipidemia. So lower LDL or ApoB and keep it low to reduce the number of LDL or ApoB particles that become trapped in the arterial wall, slow the progression of atherosclerosis and thus delay the uh, you know, precipitation of an event, delay the age at which acute cardiovascular events can occur and extend the cardiovascular ApoB containing lipoproteins are ADL and that's why uh, use statins, azetimibe, PCSK9 targeted agent or bempodic acid to reduce the LDL and uh, thereby reduce the ASCVD risk. ApoB containing particles, the clinical benefit of all lipid lowering therapies is similar and proportional to the absolute reduction in ApoB and duration of therapy. Benefits are independent of corresponding reduction in LDL, TG, remnant cholesterol or non-HDL cholesterol. Just I refer to one very important trial which was using the molecule called as Pema Fibrate. It was to reduce the triglyceride level and see if that reduces the ASCVD risk. So prominent trial was to reduce triglycerides, remnant cholesterol and non-HDLC. What was actually observed? Look at the uh, x-axis which is absolute ApoB decrease in milligram per deciliter and the y-axis is the proportional risk reduction, of course the cardiovascular disease risk reduction. Now look at the different randomized trials of lipid lowering therapies. So these are the statin trials, these are the azetimibe trials, this is the cholesterol esterate transferase protein trials, these are niacin trials, these are fibrate trials, this is again a triglyceride lowering trial and this is the prominent trial. Now what was observed in the prominent trial? The ACVD risk reduction is the lowest. So, lowering of triglyceride did not reduce the risk of CV events. But statins, which predominantly reduce ADL, they have a larger uh, cardiovascular disease risk reduction. So, that's something which is very, very important. So, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease is something which is because of trapping of LDL particles within the arterial wall. And that's why reduce LDL start in time and keep LDL low depending on the background risk and keep that low over a longer period of time so that the patient lives a life which is ASCVD risk free. <laughs>